Father, speak through me and let lives be transformed as we share your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my theme for Easter is the donkey, the crowd, and the Lord. The donkey, the crowd, and the Lord. So, today I'll speak on the donkey. Next week, I'll speak on the crowd. And then the week after, I'll be speaking to you on the Lord. On the Lord. Amen. Let's not get too spiritual. Let's not say, oh, daddy, and, and on, the, on the Easter Sunday, where you should be talking about the crucifixion of the Lord, you spoke about the crowd. In fact, we should be talking about the crucifixion of the Lord almost every day in our lives. Amen. We actually don't need a special occasion to share it. So let's begin our journey. So part one of the series is titled, The Lord Needs It. The Lord needs it. How a village donkey became a city celebrity. How a village donkey became a city celebrity. And I, I need you to follow me as we share God's word um, and apply it to our lives. Amen. So our main scripture for today is Mark chapter 11 from the verse 1 to the verse 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cord, that is a donkey, tied there. And no one has ever, which no one has ever ridden, Reading. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell them the Lord needs it. Underline that or highlight that in your, in your Bible. And we'll send it back here shortly. Then they went and found a court outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that cord? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the cord to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread, spread their cloaks on the street, whilst others spread branches they had cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was only already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now next week our focus is on the crowd. The week after we will look at the Lord. And we will look at the journey of Jesus cleansing the, the, um, his father's house. And the, the road to the cross. And the price he paid for our sins. But today let's look at the donkey. And from this scripture... We are going to learn eight lessons from the donkey in the Hosanna story. We can call it the eight Christian life lessons. The eight Christian life lessons from the donkey in the Hosanna story. Number one, place, place. Jesus said, go to the village. Go to the village. There is, a, there is a street, very busy street in Accra, it's called the Obasanjo Way. The Obasanjo Way is, is, is divides two communities or a number, a cluster of communities. If for those of you who know Accra very well, if you are driving from 37 towards um, Kaogudi, Am I right? Yeah, towards Kaokudi and uh, towards Accra Girls. On your right, 
you will find rich, you will find the airport residential area, you will find the Jowulus, and you will find all the very rich communities. Just across the street, you will find Nima, Mamobi, uh, Newtown, Pickfa. If you were born in a house on the right, you are likely to have been born into a family of politicians, um, top CEOs, a billionaire, the family of um, international business people, family of an MP, etc. And your chances of succeeding in life is greater than those born just across the street. How a simple location can make a difference. How a simple location can make a difference. Today, as I'm speaking to you, children, several children, probably thousands, will be born today. But a child born in New York and the one born in Afghanistan, their chances of surviving beyond a certain age will be different based on just location. In Afghanistan, your religion will be chosen for you. In Afghanistan, once you are born in Afghanistan, you, you, you automatically, the, your chance that you become, a, you believe in a certain religion. Once you are born in New York, the chance that you believe in a certain religion. The chances are that you go to university once you are born in New York, there is unlike, there is a, there is a greater chance that you might not go to university when you are born in Afghanistan. You, you may, in Afghanistan, decide to go to war in the very early state of your life. Are, are you here? Do you understand me? So location is important. Location is, is very important. I believe that if my mother had not made that bold decision um, around um, 1979 or so to come to Accra and we have remained in Kumasi, I would have been a different person. Accra offered me more opportunities. Accra um, opened more doors for me. I met people that made influence and contributed into my life. So Jesus sending his disciples to a village knew what he was doing. There were donkeys in the city, but yet he left them and decided to send them to the village. Now, you know in Africa, uh, villages are symbols of poverty, symbols of, of death, and symbols of premature death, symbols of, of darkness, because there are no electricity. Uh, uh, most villages do not have access to water and electricity, a symbol of sickness and disease. And so, in this very scripture, we are not looking at a village as a location, but a village as the description of your state. So, Jesus said, go to that village. Go to that village. Go to that poor person. Go to that sick person. Go to that person who had no opportunity to succeed or to make it in life. Go and bring that person to me. The story of Easter is Jesus taking us from our hopelessness into a very hopeful situation. Are you here? And I am telling you this morning, it doesn't really matter the state where you find yourself. This is a period where you should respond to the master's call. Your marriage may have a village status. Your, your finances may have a village status. Your, your, your business may have a village status, not a city status. And you feel you are left behind. You feel the opportunities available to you is so small. I came to announce to you that the Lord is calling you. There, there is a messenger on the way with a message. The Lord needs you. The Lord said, I should bring you to Jerusalem. The Lord said, I should take you from this village and bring you to Jerusalem. 
I remember the, the day my, 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 was, oh yeah, my sister came from Accra and said, my mother said she should bring us to Accra. Came from Accra and said, my mother said she should bring us from Kumas to Accra. I was sick. I was so sick. I told you when I was a child, I used to get sick a lot. I was so sick. I remember the pain throughout the journey. Then I landed in Accra. And opportunities just opened. Beating my mom. And she administering drugs to me. In three days, I was on my feet. In three days, I was walking around. In some few months, I was in school. I'm meeting new friends, new opportunities, etc., etc. I don't know about you. But I believe that my story to become born again was connected to the relocation from Kumasi to Accra. I believe it. And I believe that in this Easter, God is about to change that state where you find yourself in. A, vi a village in this context is not a location, but a village is a state where you are. A condition where you find yourself in. Light is coming into your darkness. Hope is coming into your hopelessness. Healing is coming into that sick situation uh, in the name of Jesus. Good news is reaching you in that bad situation. Something positive is about to happen to you. The bitterness is going. That bitterness is giving way to betterment. You are going to get better after this, after this sermon in the name of Jesus. What, what people will get by driving into a shop in an air-conditioned, beautiful car, the people in the village have to work for hours and work and break their back to get. I came to announce to you that what you used to struggle, what you have not been able to do in 10 years, in this Easter season, there's an oil coming upon you. You will do it in one year. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is calling you out of that village situation. Out of that village circumstance. Out of that village marriage situation. Out of that village financial situation. Out of that village business. Jesus is calling you now. And if your amen sound like a tender, it is happening to you. Number two, number two, he said, number two was the plight of the donkey. The donkey was tied. He said, you will find a donkey tied there. Bondage, bondage. Easter is a season of liberation. Jesus died to liberate us, first and foremost, from our sins. And I want to tell you here, the sin that so easily besets you, the sin of masturbation, the sin of pornography, the sin of drugs and alcohol, the sin of prostitution, the sin of anger, the sin of gossip, the sin, the something that so easily besets you and has taken you bondage. And you are struggling and you know that you want to get out of this, but you are not able to get out of it. This is a season of total liberation. It is your season of total liberation. I release that upon you. I, 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 I'm the messenger Jesus sent to your village to release you from that bondage and to call you out of that bondage. Whatever has bound you, whatever is holding on to you, whatever has tied you to a village situation, I command, let that thing lose now. In the name of Jesus. Let that thing loose now. In the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of the lamp. And we declare any room. The cause of death. The cause of sickness. The cause of depression. The cause of retrogression. That is holding you. Let it break now. Let it break now. Let it break now. 
as a disciple of the Lord and as a servant of the Lord, I came with a message. Whatever they have used to tie you, they have used to tie your finances, they have used to tie your womb, they have used to tie your business, they have used to tie your progress, they have used to tie your marriage. I declare and I speak, liberation is coming to you. Total liberation is coming to you. We appeal to the cross at Calvary. We appeal to the cross at Calvary. We we appeal to the cross at Calvary in the name of Jesus. A good, a, a good amen will bring you liberation. A better amen will bring you liberation. Jesus said, You'll find a donkey tied in that village that no man has ridden on. That no man has ridden on. That no man, you see, you see the village situation. <laughs> it's, it's a very difficult one that no man had ridden on who will employ you without an experience this donkey had no CV no experience if you go to buy a horse one of the first thing you ask is how many races has the horse won if you go to buy a donkey, you want to find out how many loads had the donkey carried. Does it have the capacity? If you're going to buy a car, you test drive the car. This donkey, nobody has even test driven it. The donkey had no CV, had no education, had nothing that will offer him opportunity. In the village, you have nothing that will offer you the opportunity. But Jesus said, I haven't come for a finished product. I have come for a raw material. I have come for a raw material. It is what you are not qualified for that Jesus will qualify you for. Am I preaching here? The blood of the lamp came to open doors for those who don't deserve it. He came to usher us into a grace. Came to usher us into a favor. Came to usher us into opportunities that we don't deserve. That's why we must serve him more. Sometimes some opportunities are opened and I don't have the capacity for it. But some way, somehow, he gives them to me. I came to announce to you, for those of you, that people think that you don't have what it takes to marry, that because of the lamp, and because of the cross, or cross and the, because of the shed blood, your wedding will amaze people. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. People think that your season is over and your time is over and nothing will happen to you. And, 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 and that is the end of your life. Can I announce to someone here that Jesus doesn't need your help to help you. He doesn't need your help to help you. He doesn't need your help to help you. He met a woman at the well. Asked her of what, for water. And the woman said, we Samaritans, we don't deal with the choose guys, no. And Jesus said, if you knew who you were talking to, you would have asked me for water. And I would have given you water and you would thirst no more. He looked at the man. The man had no cap. Jesus doesn't need to have a cap to give you water. He is the water himself. He is the water himself. He is the water himself. He doesn't need your degree to give you a job. He is the job himself. He doesn't need you to have millions to own a house. He is the house himself. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that building. It does not take money to build a house. It takes the Lord to build a house. It does not take education to be prosperous. It takes the Lord to be prosperous. It takes you serving the Lord. It takes you dedicating your life to him. It takes you worshiping him. It takes you giving him all and all. Now we are on a material, a donkey bondage that no one, yeah, 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 that nobody had ridden on. That was a donkey Jesus chose. It was just like when he called me to become a pastor. I was wondering, I said, me? Me? I 
I'm just 22, inexperienced. And you are calling me to be a pastor. But I was amazed how he went through me. You, you, you know, Jesus comes to you when it is impossible to do the possible. So that he can do the possible through you. So that all men and women will know that this is Jesus. He chose a 90 year old woman and a 100 year old man to give birth to a seed, Isaac. If he had chosen Dijo and Andy, it would be no, it would be no news. Because they are young and they could have children. But when your body is as good as dead and your womb is as good as dead and yet God brings life into it. Am I talking to someone here? God, God loves hopeless situations. When he sees it, he comes in with hope. God loves useless people because he only needs useless people to make them useful. Mm. And that is the story of Easter. The story of Easter, that is the story of Easter. It's the transformation of a life from the inside out. The cross, cross out all your problems. Am I, am I prophesying? No, no, no. no. Look, look at the fourth one. Look at the fourth lesson. Position. Outside on the street. The street is a place of rejection. Most children on the street are children from broken homes. Fathers did not take care of them. Fathers neglected them. Some of these children, you reject them when they come close to your car. You shout on them. Go back. Don't touch my car. Don't touch my car. Go. They are on drugs. We see them as thieves. We see them as the problem in our community. Jesus said, I am looking for that donkey that is rejected by everyone. The donkey on the street. The donkey who is not tied in the, in the, in the stable, but on the street. Rejection. I don't know, some of you here feel very rejected. You don't feel accepted by, by your friends. You don't feel accepted by your family. You don't feel accepted by your community. You feel you have this sense of rejection. You don't feel accepted by your husband. You don't feel accepted by your wife. I said the story of Easter is the calling of the rejected. The story of Easter is God turning the rejected stone into the chief cornerstone. By the atoning sacrifice of Christ. By the painful death of Christ on the cross. This is not a religion. This is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Jesus is not a religious leader. He is a life changing spirit. Amen. Jesus is a life changing spirit. When he comes into you. He changes your entire you. The entire you. If there is no change in you, please, you are in church. You are not in Christ. Because no man comes to him and remains the same. If I was a beggar, people mocked me, teased me, make mockery of me. I felt so rejected, so isolated, so pain. I was so much bitter against people. Today, look at me. Those who rejected me come looking for me. Those who made mockery of me can't come looking for me. That is why I don't despise any man. Especially the man that knows the Lord. The man that has given his life to Jesus. That's why I'm very careful. That's why I choose my words very well when I'm addressing such people. Because I will have to painfully eat back my, my, my words one day. Please, if they don't like you, don't force yourself on them. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. He likes you just the way you are. He likes you just the way you are. Jesus spent more time on the street than he spent in the chapel. 
How many times did he preach in the synagogues? How many times did he get into the synagogues? No. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Public. <laughs> Number five, public. He was tied to the door. Openly disgraced. So if there is a door, if there was a door, then there was a room. Why was he not tied to the room? But at the door. Whoever put him there was making a public mockery of him. That story you have kept over the years is no longer a secret. People know it and they are making mockery of you. Guess what? Jesus, in most cases, does not bless you in private. He blesses you in the public. So that all men will know and give glory to him. If your story, if your story is out there in the public and people are gossiping about you, I just came to announce to you, you are a candidate for a blessing. You are a candidate for a transformation. You are a candidate for total transformation. If you believe it, let your amen sound better. Let them make public mockery of you. Let them. Let them talk about you. One woman once came to me to apologize to me. When things were difficult for me and mommy, she said she and one lady sat down and they used to come to church and they used to come to me for prayers. But after that, they go and start to say, this man, we don't think God sent him to Spinter's Road. The way, God will not let a man suffer the way they are suffering. They suddenly, when they have, when they have discussed us, it, you know, I've, I've said something with you before, that there are two levels of your life. The gossip state and the gospel state. The gossip is when you were bad news. The gospel is when you were good news. If I've never been at a gossip level, you can never be at a gospel level. Are you here? So they will gossip. Let them. Let them. Don't run away because they are gossiping. Don't, don't leave because they are gossiping. Don't, 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 don't fight them because they are gossiping. The gossip must come before the gospel. Once you see they are gossiping about you, begin to praise the Lord. Once you see they are gossiping about you, begin to rejoice because the gospel is about to come. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So the gospel is any good news that has the capacity to bring people to the Lord. And when your story becomes a good news, when, when, when you come to an area like this as a squatter, and suddenly you become the landlords of the landlords. That is a good news. It can bring a soul to the Lord. May your testimony within this Easter, my God, my God, within the next 30 days, may, may you have a testimony. May you have a testimony that will bring people to the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Papa, papa. Number six. Number six. People. The people there. What are you doing? Why are you untying the donkey? It's nice for him to be there. The donkey gives us a story to tell. Why are you untying the donkey? The first group of people I ordained as deacons and elders in this church, including Deacon Ado and one Deacon Kota and other people. And so the people, people questioned me. Why are you making these people deacons and elders? Why? No, 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 man of God, you cannot do that. They don't qualify. <laughs> because me, myself, I, I don't qualify. I'm here by grace. I'm preaching to you by grace. Not on the account of my own righteousness. Who qualifies? If we had dealt with us according to our iniquity, who would have qualified? Who would have been here? Who would have been here? Who would have been here? 
if he had not died for us, all of us this morning would have brought goats, would have brought sheep, would have brought some of you, your sins are too big, would have brought elephants. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People didn't go to the synagogue with nothing. They went before they entered, handed over, and then the, the ship was slaughtered, handed over the ship to the priest and was slaughtered. That's why if you come to church and you, are, you can't pay your tithe and you can't give your offering, it baffles me because what you would have done under the Old Testament, you are not doing a tenth of it. Do you know why Jesus went to be the people who were selling the doves and um, changing money in the temple? Because, because people traveled. Like people came from Nigeria. Let's say the temple is here and you have to come in and worship the Lord here. So he came from Nigeria with Nara to buy a ship. So there must be money changes around to change the money for you so you can buy the ship. Those who could not afford the ship will have to offer doves. So there were people selling doves as well. Look at you. Today, look at you. And this is the story of Easter. The story of Easter. The story of Easter is the story where God silenced those who questioned you. Today, the people who questioned my calling. I remember when I went to Bible school, somebody sent a message through one of my friends to come and tell me I should be careful who told me God has called me. People will question you. People will question so many. When I was going to get married, people questioned me. You guys, are you crazy? If our people called mommy and told mommy, this guy is going to mess up your life. But mommy's senior pastor told her, I don't want to be involved in this wedding. So he didn't come. He sent the wife. Because she said that, if I come to the wedding, people will say, I endorse your pain. Because this boy is going to cause you pain. And there was a man who at my graduation prophesied on me that God was going to make me a great man of God. And in the back door, called, uh, because, because mommy was a member of a church, of his church, called mommy and said, listen, don't marry that boy. The family he comes from, you can't marry from there. It will cause you pain. Mommy said, the Lord said I should marry him. Okay, then I won't come to your wedding. Send the wife. And the wife came angrily. Nobody holds the monopoly to the mind of God. Are you here? You need the word to tell you what to do, not a prophet to tell you what to do. Study the word and pray. Mommy and I, our marriage was based on two young people who were so much in love with Jesus. They prayed, they fasted on their own. We had not met. We were praying and fasting. When we met, we realized that light has met light. When we met, there was nobody, especially from mommy's side. As for my friends, if they did not agree, they could not tell me. Um, but nobody who knew mommy who actually approved that we could get married and we will get where we are getting to. But we knew, in the inside of us, we knew that God was coming, bringing us together for a mission to bless people like you, to be here at this time and be a blessing to people like you. Please, if we listen to everybody and the things they say, you will miss the will of God. Let him sit down in judgment of you, but God will not judge you. Let them draw their conclusions on you. When they draw their conclusions, that is where God begins with you. Elder, listen. Let them say what they want to say. Let them sit down there and question and question you and throw questions at you. Listen. Every question they throw, God has answers for them. Your God has answers for them. Let no man, let no man let you feel confused. Your clarity comes from God. Now, do you know, do you know that when people see you are getting liberated and you are getting empowered, they feel threatened? 
Oh, there are even men when they see their wives are getting empowered, they feel threatened. And and look at this. Look at this. The people questioned. Why are you untying that donkey? It's our reference point. At least when we fail, he's failed more than us. We refer to him. That even donkey, so so and so, is still alive. You will not be a reference point for somebody's failure. The next time they come measuring themselves with you, they will see you are gone very far. The cross can make it happen. The blood can make it happen. He didn't die for nothing. He died for your total transformation from the inside out. Hmm. Number seven. Untie it and bring it here. If you don't, if you don't see the value of that donkey, untie it and bring it here. And bring that donkey to me. Whatever they have used to bind that donkey. That fear. That curse. That covenant. That altar. I have sent you to go and untie that donkey. Easter is a time of total liberation. It's a time where you are untied. From the thing that bounds you. And brings you down. Uh, 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 uh. Can I prophesy somebody's total liberation? Can I speak somebody's total liberation? The Holy Ghost is untying you now. The restrictions are going. He said, Go there, untie that donkey, and bring that donkey to me. Bring that donkey to me. They don't, need, they don't see the value of it, just untie it. <laughs> my pastor didn't see my value he would have kept me in the church there are many people who don't see your value but Jesus sees it untie that donkey oh but the Lord but nobody has read it on before untie that donkey Lord but he's a public ridicule untie that donkey Lord but this donkey is the village untie that donkey Lord, we can give you a city horse. Go to the village. Untie that donkey. As I speak now, I see the Lord untying you. Whatever has kept you bondage and whatever cord they have used to tie you, I, I prophesy a total liberation. As a high-ranking officer of the kingdom, I am speaking, I am speaking. Whatever holds you to your past, you are getting untied right now in the name of Jesus. Ah. Somebody's getting liberated. Somebody's getting liberated. Right now, I see it. I feel it. I sense it in my spirit. Somebody's getting liberated. This is what Easter is about. This is what Easter is about. This is what the cross can do for you. This is what the cross can do for you. This is what the shed blood can do for you. This is what the shed blood can do for you. You have been bound with in sin. Some covenant has bound you. Some cord is holding you. Some curse is holding you. But that sears the spirit of the Lord. You are being untied now. You are re re receiving your liberation now. Somebody shout freedom. The Lord is breaking that spiritual marriage. The man that comes to sleep, sleep with you, the woman that comes to sleep with you in your dreams, that's here the spirit of the Lord. I am liberating you. I'm bringing total liberation. I'm bringing total liberation. I'm bringing total liberation. The Lord is breaking the cord of singleness. The Lord is breaking the cord of singleness. The Lord is breaking the cord of singleness. You are about to get married very soon. The Lord is breaking the cord of poverty. You are about to become a millionaire sooner. The Lord is breaking the cord of retrogression. You are about to progress now. The Lord is breaking the cord of joblessness. You are about to become an entrepreneur now. Am I speaking to somebody here? Am I speaking to somebody here?
Kabababaya. It's a song. And make me whole. He he touched me. Yes, he touched me. Oh, the joy that flood my soul. There is something really happening. And I Stand it. Look at the last one. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, all this while, the purpose of that donkey was for Jesus to ride on. All this while, the purpose of that donkey was for Jesus to ride on. But location wanted to destroy it. But those who tied it wanted to destroy it. Look at, look at. When they brought the cords to Jesus he, and they threw their clothes over it, he sat on it. He sat on it. So there was a prophecy given by Isaiah. It was, there was supposed to be a donkey Jesus was going to ride on. That donkey had been located in a village and tied to a, ho- to a door. Who would have thought, who would have thought that Isaiah was talking about that donkey? In a village, in a village, in a village, in a village. You see, your purpose is greater than you you can imagine. What God wants to do in your life is bigger than you can imagine. Where they have placed you will not matter. Because when the time comes, he will call for you. When the time comes, he will call for you. When the time comes, he will call for you. When the time comes, he will call for you. 
It doesn't matter where they have placed you. It doesn't matter where you are now. But I came to prophesy that in in this service, your purpose is coming into fruition. If I were you, I'll be on my feet and begin to speak in some tongues and begin to speak in some tongues and begin to speak in the songs and say to the Lord, bring me into my purpose, bring me into my purpose, bring me into my purpose, bring me into my divine purpose, bring me into my divine purpose. Yeah. 
for your grace. Thank you for bringing many people here into their purpose, their divine purpose. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Take your seat. The beauty of holiness.